Okay. Wow, <laughs> oh, how does it feel to have the tables reversed? <laughs> right? I know. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm interviewing Dr. Morrison, our new principal. <laughs> <laughs> Ex colleague. Right. <laughs> okay, so the first question I have is How do you ensure instances of intolerance and harassment among students, such as bullying, racism, or sexism, don't occur? So I think this is a there's a lot of things involved in this question. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to create an environment that's safe for our students. Um, and I think we do that through several things. I think the character counts mm -hmm. um, piece that is happening on campus tied with the terrific kids mm -hmm. incentive um, helps with them learning and understanding. I also think our social worker, Miss Angela, mm -hmm. um, is a really big help here with yeah. students and our scholars on campus. Um, just giving them information and knowledge in their bulletin mm -hmm. that goes to them every week. Yeah. But then also with the one-on-one -on -one time mm -hmm. that she has or small group time that she yes. does with kids. Yeah. So I think all of those are really helpful pieces mm -hmm. to encourage um, kindness on campus, really. Yeah. Because if we build an environment that um, helps our scholars know that we care for them, that we are excited that they're mm -hmm. here, um, where they're engaged in the learning and they want to be here, yeah. we're going to find less and less of these issues taking place. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all, it also helps that our school has a very hands-on approach. Like you said, with Miss Angela being involved mm -hmm. and having a really good, um, she has really good rapport with all the kids. Right. And then um, all the positive reinforcements that are being, um, they're being used to encourage kids mm -hmm. to kind of watch out for each other, not just for their behavior, but everybody else too. Yeah, so I think that could align with our kickboard, mm -hmm. our PBIS pieces that are, that we've been starting and um, we are having talks on the backside about some adjustments to be proactive on mm -hmm. certain things rather than reactive. Yeah. And so, but some of those things take a little bit of time to yeah. restructure. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm new yeah. and so learning the current systems yeah. so you're doing an awesome job ah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay our next one is what is the best way to interact and engage with parents so um, if you remember from the very first staff meeting mm -hmm. my ask of all of you guys was one time throughout the year mm -hmm. speak with your parents every student in your classroom mm -hmm about something positive, breathe positive into their life, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you do that through communicating with parents, right? So I think if we can start the conversations in a positive manner, mm -hmm. uh, our parents are much more likely to embrace like when something does yeah. go wrong or a student makes a poor choice mm -hmm. um, if they know that you're looking for the good in their kid mm -hmm. um, that's a huge piece yeah. that's what parents want yeah. they want to know that you see their child they want to know that you're caring for them mm -hmm. you're with them probably more than they are with yeah. their kid um, for different reasons yeah. um, some of our parents work constantly right um, are in the fields or they are you know just full-time workers mm -hmm. here or there and so um, the teachers on campus the environment on campus becomes like a second home to our mm -hmm. kids and so parents just want to know that you care about them yeah and so I think that's that's a huge piece is to start speaking the positive um, and then that communication mm -hmm becomes open yeah especially if you establish a positive relationship from the get-go right 
then like you said, it'll feel more like a collaboration in terms of addressing maybe their students' behavior down the line as opposed right. to always a negative, negative, negative. And it's like, well, where does the positive come in? That's right, yeah. yeah. How many kids have you been able to talk to yet? I have actually been doing one a week. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, and I feel like with our kids too, um, um, a lot of, since I have kinder, a lot of the parents are very afraid. Like they're still scared because they're letting their kids go for the first time. Yes. And with their needs, um, they're maybe waiting for me to say like, he had a really bad day or he's really struggling. But whenever they hear, oh, so-and-so was able to match icons today. Yeah. And then they get really proud because they didn't even know their kids could do that. Yeah. So it's really nice. And Good. it feels, I, this year, it's definitely felt a little bit more, like, tight-knit. And okay. we're barely, what, the first quarter in. Yeah. So that's a really good way to start the year. Yay. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yay, man. <laughs> okay, our next question. What is the most um, effective way to engage students? So this one's hugely um, part of my heart. So um, I think there are lots of ways we can engage students. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we need to focus on them mm -hmm. more than focusing on ourselves and what's mm -hmm. easier for us. Yes. And so if we are able to put the kids first, mm -hmm. um, a shift occurs because not only do they see, do they feel seen, mm -hmm. Um, but the things that are happening in the classroom revolve around things that they're interested mm -hmm. in, right? So if one of your kiddos just loves dinosaurs, mm -hmm. then some of the activities or centers that you create in your classroom mm -hmm. has dinosaurs because yeah. you know they love that, mm -hmm. right? Um, if um, I think I think it's about um, helping them find their voice. Mm -hmm in what it is that they're doing too. Mm -hmm. um, nobody likes just repeating yeah. um, what they're being told. Mm -hmm. They don't just like being told things. You don't, like, even yeah. as adults, yeah. we don't like that, right? So why exactly. do we think kids are gonna like mm -hmm. that? They don't like those yeah. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. They want to be engaged in the learning. They wanna have fun. And so I think that if we can shift things in the classrooms, so they're having fun, but they're doing the learning and the process. Yeah. They don't even know necessarily that they're doing the mm -hmm. learning, but you do because yeah. you planned it that yeah. way, right? Mm -hmm. um, I even think putting their names in word problems or stories yeah. or things like that, they're like, oh, that was my name, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so just the little things yeah. um, are exciting for kids when they feel that you see who they are. Yeah. Like definitely personalizing different mm -hmm. aspects of lessons and just activities in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because we were just, we have been talking about like the different learning theories. Okay. And a little bit of each one kind of goes into that being aware of where they, like what their interests are based on where they are developmentally and also um, taking their backgrounds and their interests into account to be able to provide an enriching Right. Um, content for the kids yeah. to be engaged and also not really doing more of like a like you just speak to them and all the kids are not really active but engaging in, engaging in more like you pose a question or a problem and then you guide the students to use their minds and their personalities to come up with solutions yeah. and ideas like inquiry yeah. based, right yeah where we're as the teacher you're more the facilitator mm -hmm. than that you know yeah. sage on the stage is what they yeah. say right that person who's just always in the front lecturing yes. or giving out disseminating the information mm -hmm. um if we provide a variety of opportunities or mm -hmm. ways of learning yeah. that our kids um can enjoy like um, maybe they want to write a song about something yes. or maybe they're techie and they mm -hmm. want to create, mm -hmm. you know, a video yeah. or, you know, a slide deck of mm -hmm. something. Like there are so many different ways yeah. that students can really show their learning. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like just one size fits yeah. all, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I love that. 
I'm, that makes me really happy because not not only am I reading about that stuff and think like, oh, a school would have to do this. This would be a good placement. Mm -hmm. But knowing that I'm a part of a school that actually does, it, it's a, embracing that approach. Yeah. And it's it kind of sounds like the con, what is it constructivism mm -hmm. approach. So that's that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of um, what you'll see in like the bulletins every once mm -hmm. in a while, I'll put in different links to things. Yeah. And if you look at those, it's a lot around engagement of mm -hmm. kids yeah. and a variety of ways that we could help them show their mm -hmm. learning. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Okay, the next one. How do you maintain work-life mm -hmm. balance? We've had a conversation <laughs> about this. We have. <laughs> I know. So this is this is hugely important because self-care and making sure you're taking care of you mm -hmm. is vitally important to you being successful here at school, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So um, in order in order to do that, um, I always, when I was teaching in the classroom, mm -hmm. I would always choose one day a week that became my late day. Mm -hmm. And that's the day that I would like do my lesson plans and I would prepare for the next week and make sure I had everything mm -hmm. I needed um, to go before I left on Friday. So I yeah. always chose Thursday because that's what worked for my family. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you got to figure out what your system is, right? Yeah. Because then I didn't want to take things home with me. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm at home, my kids, my family, they need to know that mm -hmm. I'm at home yeah. for them, mm -hmm. right? Um, and even if you don't have a family, like it's the time you your brain needs mm -hmm. off, right? Yeah. There needs to be some rejuvenation time. And so I, I often find myself still doing that. Like there's a lot of things to do. Mm -hmm. um, and over the weekend, I did bring a few things home, but I didn't do any of it. Oh. And so like... <laughs> I often find myself, if I do bring something home, mm -hmm. I probably won't do it yeah. because it's time for my mm -hmm. family. So work is always going to be there. Yeah. You have to figure out what your essentials are mm -hmm. or what your deadlines are mm -hmm. and make sure you're always in front of those, yeah. right? Because yeah. there are always going to be deadlines, mm -hmm. but there are always things that we put in place because I'd rather do that mm -hmm. instead of what my deadline pieces yeah. are. Um, and so you just have to be really good about mm -hmm. that. I would always make myself like to-do lists or like, yeah. you know, highest leverage pieces. <laughs> like yeah. these are the things I really have to yeah. do. So I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. um, the next week or moving forward. And so just really trying to find the system for you that when you're at work, mm -hmm. you're at work. You are efficient yeah right mm -hmm. and when you leave and you go home you really make time for your family yeah and so um i am a huge proponent of that when i had student teachers they would say don't take it home with you mm -hmm. don't take it home yeah and so if you take it home you're either just lugging things back and forth mm -hmm. or you're ignoring your own family yeah and you don't want to do that you're neglecting mm -hmm. something yeah yeah yeah, that definitely was one of the best pieces of advice that I also got. And you're right. Like, I was just taking stuff home, and I feel like I, you know, my body and my mind knew that I was home or wherever I was going, mm -hmm. and everything would just either stay in my trunk or it would stay in my house, and it never would get done until Monday. Or I was very anxious on Sunday nights mm -hmm. whenever it was time to, because, you know, we're mentally preparing for the work week, yeah. and then you realize, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I brought all these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like um, organization and time management and just mm -hmm. knowing priorities and really setting yeah. those boundaries are really important yeah. things to... And you don't have to grade everything or yeah. book it, you know. Yeah. Like, there are things that we give to our students because it's just good practice. Yeah. You know, for you, it would be based on their goals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So not everything has to be looked at. There are mm -hmm. things that kids can do, yeah. and you can do some observational pieces, mm -hmm. take some quick notes, yeah. and you're done mm -hmm. with that activity. Yeah. Send it home, be, you know, you're finished. Yeah. Like, you don't have to collect everything. Yeah. That's what I found my first couple years of teaching. <laughs> I would just have sticks and sticks and sticks, oh, and I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, I can't. <laughs> Like, I just can't keep up yeah. with all of it. Mm -hmm. And so, 
you know, give yourself that freedom to yeah. know, like, these are the things this week that I'm actually taking a grade for. Okay. Um, and then give yourself, you know, that freedom yeah. to say it's okay that not everything gets a grade on it. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at right now. Like, balancing, prioritizing quality, like, maybe less activities but they're more quality because mm -hmm. now I have more time to focus on those and making sure that those are really yeah. enriching as opposed to trying to push an activity for different parts of the day every single day mm -hmm. and then we're scrambling and then especially, you know, my classroom it gets a little hectic. Yeah, <laughs> and a lot of things can be integrated, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. Like, there are goals, there are things that can overlap. Yes. And so what, yeah. what is one activity that I can hit three things yes. at the same time? Exactly. And so then you're just looking at it for mm -hmm. different purposes. Yeah. And that's way efficient, yes. right? Yeah, that's yeah. very true. <laughs> okay, um, how do you keep educators motivated? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, I think... I think it starts with um, the head of the school. Like what I display or give off to, mm -hmm. um, to our staff I think is really important. If I were always to come to school with a negative attitude or yeah. cranky, um, you know, or always saying, you know, terrible things like, why aren't you doing this? Mm -hmm. or, why isn't this happening? You wouldn't be very motivated right. to continue to do the work, mm -hmm. right? It's a hard job anyways. Yeah. And so I think part of my role is to be your cheerleader, yeah. right? Yeah. To be that person to say like, hey, I love this, or yeah. this is really fun, or to be visible so you guys know that I'm invested. Yeah. And that I'm I'm in it with you, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think those are the things that are the pieces mm -hmm. that keep you guys moving. Yes, I think the little um, you know thank yous and appreciations. Yes. I think that's highly motivating. Mm -hmm. And I was appreciated whenever my administrators did things like that for me. Mm -hmm. And so I just tried to learn from my past experiences, yeah. um, what motivated different types of people, mm -hmm. and then just try and put little bits of those yeah. things in. Yeah. in. Um, I think being present, uh, my door open, yes. people can come talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, I try and make time as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and so I think all of those pieces make you guys feel cared for, mm -hmm. appreciated, seen, heard, mm -hmm. and that's what keeps you guys moving. Yeah, I definitely agree. It has, um, it definitely helps and you do feel a big difference, even with just music playing in the mornings. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's yes, I love it. <laughs> At first, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I heard it, I thought, what is that? It was so weird. <laughs> I know. And I thought it was my phone, and I thought, did I leave my music playing? <laughs> and then I realized it was coming from the school, and I thought, that is so awesome. Yeah. That's really nice. Just trying to do something to set a yeah. good mood yeah. for everybody, yeah. right? Kids aren't the only ones who like music yes. in the morning. Yeah. And your personality definitely radiates, and you can you can definitely feel it on our campus. Aww. The big shift with everyone just seeming, everybody just seems more um, like awake. You know? Oh, like, nice! You know, I, at least that's how I feel. And I mean, I get to see everybody pass right in front of my door. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, you're doing that's an awesome fun. job. Aww, thank you. <laughs> okay, so we are at our halfway mark. I'm gonna go check to make sure that we're still recording. <laughs> We sure are. Okay, okay. good. Um, all righty. So the next one. Um, how do you ensure students are prepared for standardized testing? Okay, so I think there's a lot of pieces that fall into that one. Um, I think just my own knowledge of it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and making sure that our teachers are informed. Mm -hmm. Like our teachers who are currently going to be giving the standardized testing, right? Yes. So making sure that um, 
they're knowledgeable mm -hmm. about what the expectations are, what the rigor is on the assessment. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't just, it just doesn't lay with the third through sixth grade teachers, right? right? There's a lot of work that needs to take place in K2 mm -hmm. in order to prepare our kiddos in 3-6 yes. for the test. So um, there's a lot of work. So um, I think the district is doing a lot of good work mm -hmm. around um, preparing you guys with understanding state standards mm -hmm. for your different grade levels, yeah. deconstructing those, making sure you understand the claims and the targets mm -hmm. and what that looks like and how that kind of like backwards maps to mm -hmm. the K-2 yes. grade levels as yeah. well. Um, I also think um, at our last uh, collaborative planning, um, you guys were not there because I think you guys were at a um, mm -hmm. special ed piece, but we did some work around identifying your next standard that you're mm -hmm. teaching okay. and then being able to look at that and, and break it up into what do our students need to know, understand, and then do in mm -hmm. order to show mastery of that yeah. standard. Because once we can break it down mm -hmm. like that, then we can start to see what are some of the um, preconcepts mm -hmm. that students need to know in order to even have access, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to that learning. What do they have to know yeah. um, or understand about mm -hmm. what that skill is so that they can take some actions on it. Yeah. Um, but I also think it's about uh, students thinking. Mm -hmm. And so um, it is about making sure our students have the opportunity to not just repeat or parrot mm -hmm. what our teachers are saying, but really have an opportunity to express their own thinking or learning around whatever skill is being taught. Mm -hmm. um, so bringing out their own voice in it, being able to think differently than other mm -hmm. people and be accepted yeah. um, with that thinking, mm -hmm. being able to have the opportunity to express and share that with their peers, because the more they have the chance to do those things, the more ideas and ways they'll be able to do the learning or express the learning, mm -hmm. um, Maybe the way they're doing it is complicated, and then they hear somebody else, and they're like, oh my gosh, that would cut my work in half, mm -hmm. right? But I never thought about yeah. that. But they would never have that opportunity to hear it if the chance wasn't given mm -hmm. in class in order to yeah. move in that direction. Yeah. So I think they're never going to be able to be ready mm -hmm. for a standardized test unless they're the ones doing the thinking. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because how are they? Yeah, and then also I feel like whenever they verbalize what they are thinking, and if there's an open environment for them to do that, it definitely allows them to also not just express their ideas and have that freedom, um, but also um, listen to other students' perspectives. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the best way to learn is just by hearing and just speaking and as opposed to, you know, reading something on a paper mm -hmm. or just listening to a teacher say, okay, we're going to learn this and this is how you do this. Right. So, yeah, definitely collaboration yeah. is and a big role. I also think that um, their mistakes mm -hmm. show have great opportunity for yes. learning, right? Yeah. So... Um, just because they make a mistake in, in something or they're working through their train of thought mm -hmm. and something doesn't necessarily line up, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of learning that yeah. can come in through that, yeah. right? So I think there's opportunities all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we just have to see them. Yeah right mm -hmm. and not just wipe them away mm -hmm. or say no yeah um we have to lean into that yeah and it's okay yeah that's a good approach <laughs> okay the next one is um what is the importance of personal development for educators in their professional careers 
So I think another thing that I've said before is that we're always learning. Mm -hmm. So there's never a time or a day or a week, a month, a year that goes by that we're not learning mm -hmm. something. And so um, being intentional about the professional development that you do engage in is really important. I think aligning it to what our school goals are mm -hmm. so then you can actively do some of the things yeah. that you're learning about. Oftentimes we go to professional developments and we're like, ooh, that's good, that's good, that's good. But we come back and we don't do anything mm -hmm. because it doesn't align with our school goals or um, there's just so many other things happening, yeah. right? Yeah. And so my approach to PDs is that when I go to a conference or a training or a learning, um, I always try and find one thing. Mm -hmm. What is the one thing that I'd really like to implement? Mm -hmm. And so I may have found seven things that I really liked, mm -hmm. but out of those things, what's the one thing that I think might have the highest leverage mm -hmm. with my students um, or my school? And then that's the one thing I'm going to jump on. Mm -hmm. And when I accomplish that one thing or I feel like I've mastered that piece, then I can identify the next thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's about not not doing too much mm -hmm. and not expecting yourself to do all of it. Yeah. Um, but just finding something that aligns with what it is that we're doing to help move your students forward in their learning. Yeah, definitely being more intentional. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, you could go to many, many conferences and PDs, but and get a lot of information that is very um, applicable maybe, mm -hmm. or it's um, um, it could be very interesting, but right. if it doesn't align with what you're doing at your school, then you know, right. maybe you could have found a different PD where one thing might have stuck out, and if you mm -hmm. stick with that one thing, then it'll be more intentional and efficient yeah. as well. And I think it's okay to even find things that are a little out of the box mm -hmm. um, if you think it would align, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it's okay to find things that are different um, if you think you can make a connection. Yeah. And then I would always say, bring it to me. Like, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. How can we, you know, make that you know, work with some of our school goals, mm -hmm. or maybe it doesn't, you just don't even know it, which yeah. then means I didn't do a good job of telling you what our <laughs> goals are, right? Um, and so uh, I think it's it's always about just communicating and yeah. talking about it and, mm -hmm. um, and being able to move that learning forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Um, the, we're almost done. <laughs> okay, so our eighth question, um, what are the best ways to collaborate with respective grade level teams? Uh, so, well, this, this I think can sometimes be tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, so I always like having the opportunity for, uh, our teams to meet every week. Mm -hmm. Because if we're constantly communicating, mm -hmm. um, and working together, I think our work as a school or grade level moves forward mm -hmm. in a more productive way. Yeah. Um, that is not always the case at every school slate or district that you go to. Mm -hmm. And so um, my hope would be that grade levels are able to build a connection with each other. Mm -hmm. um, in a way that makes them invested for each other. Mm -hmm. Because then it doesn't, doesn't matter if there's a, a scheduled time uh, to meet. Yeah, We're just gonna meet because we know it's the right thing for kids. Yeah, And I'm gonna do that after school um, in addition to when we have our staff meetings mm -hmm. or collaborative meetings or structured whatever meetings, right yeah. structured meetings it's an addition to because it's it's the best thing for our kids mm -hmm. and if we're moving forward in that direction um then we'll be able to make a lot more moves yeah i think mm -hmm. um but that 
doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. And so there's a lot of work that goes into that. Mm -hmm. And so um, do I think we're at a place where I would say we're in, you know, a good collaborative space with all of our teams? Mm -hmm. I would say no. Yeah. Um, I would say maybe some. Mm hmm but not all, mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely a work in progress yeah. of things that happen behind the scenes to try and encourage and motivate and um, build community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I was actually gonna say, I think that that alone, like just being able to collaborate more frequently with grade level teams um, would even be a motivator because the more teachers talk about what they are doing in their classrooms mm -hmm. and share ideas and um i think also it's gonna it's gonna be bound it's bound for information to come up about like the success of the successes of their students so mm -hmm. maybe a teacher tried something new she had an idea and everybody tried to implement it and then you know they had they reached that one student that maybe was mm -hmm. struggling in a certain area and just being able to talk about that and celebrate that behind the scenes too mm -hmm. is also a motivator on its own. Yeah. So I also think like that you made me think of like, um, you know, rehearsal mm -hmm. with each other. Yeah. Being vulnerable enough yes. to like rehearse certain things in front of each other mm -hmm. um, before you even step foot into the classroom. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, to feel free enough to make mistakes in front of your peers mm -hmm. and to be like, oh, that didn't work. Yeah. Right? And so to ha be able to have those open conversations, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, the the wins successes as well as the failures yes. and what are we learning from yeah. all of those pieces yeah um, and yeah. being able to get that well it just goes hand in hand with what you said um that feedback and mm -hmm. not necessarily it doesn't feel like a failure whenever something doesn't work mm -hmm. if somebody is there to be like well maybe you can try this instead yeah so yeah that's also that's Hopefully we get more time. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Okay. Um, what's the best way to incorporate technology and direct instruction? So. There are pros and cons mm -hmm. to everything. Yes. Right? Yes. And so I think it's about finding a balance. Because um, do I like it when I go into classrooms and I see the whole class on the computer? Yeah. Um, not my favorite, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'll sit in there for 20 minutes and they don't get off their computers, mm -hmm. right? So do I think that some technology systems are good? Mm -hmm. I do because they're adaptive to the students' learning. Yeah. It meets them where they're at. It does a lot of things for our kids. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that our kids have computers at home, mm -hmm. and what a great what a great time to be able to let kids be on their computers, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're gaming, they're having fun, but they're doing it at home, yeah, because they don't always get the opportunity to be in front of you, mm -hmm. and when they are. Are we going to put them on a computer? Right. Or are we going to put them in front of you? Yeah. And so, um, at times, absolutely appropriate. Yeah. Um, but for, you know, for a good amount of the day, I struggle with that. Um, I think technology... Okay, our kids live in a tech world, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. They speak tech. Yes. Probably more so than we do. Yes. Even our littlest littles, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So do I think there are opportunities and ways to incorporate technology um, so that students are engaged in the learning and the lessons and the skills? Absolutely, I do. Mm -hmm. I think, like I said earlier, they could create a movie. Mm -hmm. They could create a slideshow. They could um, do a flip grid. So yeah. then they're speaking. They're practicing their speaking mm -hmm. like, towards 
you know, a question or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there are lots of ways that we can incorporate the technology piece into it. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes what I see is not that. Yeah. It is open in the computer, get on reflux mm -hmm. or get on ice station or get on synergy or get on whatever mm -hmm. and that's what they stay on yeah. um it's not a way of um finding a different mode mm. um for them to express their learning yeah there are lots of ways we could do that yeah. and so if we start finding different ways to mm -hmm. help them express their learning we can do that through technology they could yeah. do infographics they could do all sorts of mm -hmm. fun things right yeah that's just not often what actually happens yeah. in the classrooms um and direct instruction absolutely appropriate but not every day yes not um all the time our direct instruction is for new skills, brand new learning, mm -hmm. where we can give them um, some of the information or the foundational pieces they need, so then they can do more of this inquiry-based yeah. learning, mm -hmm. right? So, um, do, do I always wanna see, like, you standing in the front giving direct instruction? Um, no, mm -hmm. because I wanna see, our students mm -hmm. be the ones doing the thinking, but is it appropriate sometimes for them, for you guys to do the direct instruction? Mm -hmm. Yes, because they need some of those yeah. foundational pieces. Yeah. So I think, like everything, I think it's a blend of being able to pull mm -hmm. um, the different strategies that yeah. you need when you need them. Yeah. It's not a, I'm gonna, this is how I do it and this is every day, this yeah. is what I'm doing. Um, it's about identifying what you need to pull when mm -hmm. yeah, um, and leveraging those pieces yeah. because there's lots of things we could do. Yeah. Did like, that help? Yeah, no, it definitely did. And you know what? Um, that also goes back to um, what we spoke about earlier about um, the constructivistic approach where people are able or the students are able to um, bounce off ideas and use their backgrounds and their cultures mm -hmm. and their interests to, um, you know, to, to connect it to whatever they're learning. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that the direct instruction is definitely the starting piece, but then each kid should be able to add to the rest of the pieces mm -hmm. by what you said, being able to pull out from different areas. Yeah. Um, but going back to the technology, I wonder if, Maybe it's become more of um, almost like I don't want to say muscle memory, but more of a routine thing because years prior there was a big push for students to spend a certain amount of time on a certain program mm -hmm. and because of COVID. Yeah. So I wonder if, you know, there started to be a little bit more conversation about, you know, maybe we can, since the kids are already very familiar with technology, maybe we can start incorporating like to practice on how to use a certain type of platform or mm -hmm. creating movies like it doesn't necessarily just have to be used for programs like ice station and mm -hmm. the yeah. reflex math and all that stuff yeah and i think that was a big thing like covid and so much time yeah. was spent on computers because they weren't with you mm -hmm. right yeah and so um it was a way to try and help with the learning but yeah. wasn't super effective right so if it wasn't effective then it's probably right. still not as effective yeah um but we you know we've always kind of used it sometimes as mm -hmm. a babysitter yeah like, okay i'm gonna work on small groups you all just get on your yes. computer so yeah. you guys stay quiet yeah. and so then i can you know yeah. do my small group or whatever right so um really not seeing it as that mm -hmm. trying to visualize technology as something different yeah um yeah because they know they know so much yes um I mean, my own children every once in a while are schooling me on, like, <laughs> all the different things. Like, yeah. Mom, all I have to do is this, this, and then I'm done. Like, yeah. And it's like, how did you – wait, do that again, <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, I think there are, there are lots of things that they know yeah. that um, we don't give them credit for. Yeah. That 
makes their learning more efficient yeah. or makes their doing more efficient. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's very true. Okay, and the last one, what is your best memory as a teacher? Mm. <laughs> so many to choose from, I bet. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Um, well, I don't know. There, there are so many. Um, I would say one of my most rewarding is teaching first grade and like that January time period, mm -hmm. everything just clicks for yes. them yeah. and they start reading. Yes. Like that is a super rewarding like moment mm -hmm. in time that I won't ever forget. Um, with my first year teaching first grade. Oh, wow. Um, because they always tell you, mm -hmm. I had always taught intermediate grades, and then my principal had asked me, please go teach first grade, I need you <laughs> down there. I was like, I don't teach kids how to read, I teach kids how to understand what they're reading. <laughs> um, and he's like, no, I really, I really need you there. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> um, but I felt like a fish out of water, and the people that I worked with had been working first grade for years. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of trusted their system mm -hmm. for a little bit, and they said, just wait till January, you'll see it all come together. Because I would get really frustrated. Like, yeah. oh, like I'm teaching these patterns and I'm teaching like all of the different things and I just don't see that they're connecting mm -hmm. anything. And they're like, just wait, Jill, just wait. <laughs> I'm like, ah. <laughs> and so, but, but when that time period came mm -hmm. in January, I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and then the lights on their faces when they realized like, they accomplished I it. I just, I read that book, yeah. like, you know? <laughs> um, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's what we're here for is yes. to find that light yeah. and to help them help them spark it yeah. right yeah no matter what definitely and so um whatever that is like yeah i mean i even remember i'm gonna give you a second one yeah um <laughs> when i was teaching intermediate grades uh -huh. i was um we decided we were going to do a play mm -hmm. and so the kids um not only memorized uh -huh. their lines um, they created their costumes, they created the design oh, wow. sets, um, they were working on their speaking and listening, their enunciation, their, like, um, expression of language, mm -hmm. right? Because you can't just read something and be right. super or whatever, right? Yeah. And so we did this whole thing, we performed it for the school, oh, wow. um, it was a whole, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I still have a video of oh, that wow. today. And I will say that for intermediate kids mm -hmm. was something they will talk about forever. Yeah. Definitely. Because I think it's about finding experiences mm -hmm. for kids, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about just coming in every day. Yeah. It's about what experience do I remember from yeah. school? Yes. And I remember being a part of that play, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and, you know, I was the one who made the ocean move or whatever, oh, yeah. right? Or um, I helped carry the boat that the pirates were in yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's just finding what those experiences are yeah. and just lighting that on fire mm -hmm. and helping them just see Love the possibilities yes right yeah definitely and so no matter where you are primary grades and intermediate grades yeah. there are always ways to find possibilities yeah. for true. kids and that's what i think it's about yeah definitely yeah. oh those are great memories yeah <laughs> that was awesome yeah I hope you enjoyed the interview. Well, thank you for asking me. <laughs> I'm really happy that you were willing to help me of with this course. assignment. Of course. Well, yeah. I'm always a fan of um, you guys working through your credentialing and supporting that and being a part of your story, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because, you know, we want to be there for you. So, 
um, as you're learning and growing and developing into the educator that you're going to be. So. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that, and I really do feel supported and Yay. very lucky to be a part of a school where, you know, it's just I'm very motivated to pursue my credential because, honestly, I never thought I was going to do that. Like, I have no idea when it happened, how it happened, but... <laughs> Here you are. Yay. Well, I'm so. glad you are. <laughs> Thank you. So, very good. All right, Mia. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I hope everything, yep, yeah, everything was recorded. Very good.